Welcome everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up a brand new SAP Datasphere space. We will go through all the details that you need to get started and we will explain all those. So let's go directly into SAP Datasphere and let's get started. So here we are in Datasphere and the first item we're going to use is the space management. So we're going ahead and we go to use the option to create a brand new space. And the first thing we're being asked is for a space name, which is also kind of a description and the space ID. We're coming back to the space ID in a few seconds. We use the option create and we're being presented with all the default configurations, which we now going to uncover in details. And we're gonna go step by step through them. So let's start with the space name and the space ID. Especially for the space ID, you should follow some form of naming convention for your projects. And SAP also has defined a set of rules, which I will share as part of the comments for this video. You can configure the storage size for disk and memory, and you can decide if you want to enable the space quota option. In case you disable the space quota option, the space can then consume as much disk and memory as there is available in your tenant. So now let's move on to the user assignment. Here, it is very important to notice that you cannot assign a single user anymore to the space. It was possible before, but now SAP introduced the concept of scoped roles. You need to configure a scope role and you need to make sure the scope role has those rights that you would like to assign configured. You can, for example, have a scope role for users viewing the content and a scope role for modeling in the space. We will come back to scope roles in another video and go through the setup in complete details like how you set up the roles and how you set up the scoped roles. Next is the data consumption and the database users. The option for the data consumption allows you to configure that your views are configured for consumption by default and you don't have to actually check that mark separately. And for database users, you can configure users that will be able to connect to the open schema of your space. So basically you create users that will be able to read and write from and to the space using external tools. The auditing part allows you to configure how long you would like to keep the audit logs or if you don't want them at all. If you do enable the audit logging, please do not forget about the configuration in the menu system configuration, where you then can assign a dedicated space for the audit views. And you can then use the data builder to create your own models based on these views. And last but not least, a quick look at the workload management settings. You will see those items being mentioned in the space configuration, but they are being referred to basically the menu system configuration, where you then find the submenu workload management. Here you can first of all configure the space priority. This is the priority compared to all other spaces in your tenant, and you basically assign the priority for your space with regard to resource assignments. The second part, the workload configuration, allows you to use the default option or to customize it. In case you actually option for the customization, you can configure the maximum threat limit and the maximum memory limit 
either as an absolute value or as a percentage of the available resources of your tenant. That's it. Today we covered the complete process of setting up an SAP Datasphere space and we went through the different options and properties from logging in, creating the spies, configuring access, auditing and configuring the workload management. Remember to think about a naming convention for your objects inside of SAP Datasphere. It's a very critical element of the development process. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others and subscribe. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments and I will respond back as quick as possible. Thank you for watching and I will see you hopefully in the next video.